Okay, our average middle class American family has $38,000 in wealth. Now, this is the middle class. This is the average family who's making around $45,000 a year when you add up the salaries of everybody in the family working as many jobs as they're working. They've got about thirty-eight grand in the equity in their home, in their checking account, in the value of their car, and you add it all together, and, you know, that's what they got, 38000 The average middle-class family in Australia, where rich people pay such high taxes that Rupert Murdoch left, left the country and came here, The average middle class family in Australia has $193,000 in wealth. In Japan, it's $141,000. In Italy, it's $123,000. It's amazing. Okay, so we've got that. Our, our middle class is melting down. We have then, at the same time, transnational corporations like TransCanada, which wants to make money taking toxic bituminous slurry and pumping it down an oil pipeline to the southern coast. By the way, yesterday I said that up in Alberta there was a, an oil spill and a, a toxic brine spill, a water spill, and I was wrong. The, the uh, toxic water spill has killed off about 1,000 acres of trees and plants. It's basically pouring salt into the, into the ground. The article that I read said this follows a, 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 an oil, several oil spills in Alberta in the past month, and so there, you know, but there's nothing in the last few days. So let me correct myself. This was just a, a just a spill of a couple million gallons of toxic water that they used to 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 get out the oil. But in any case, we've got this this corporation, this Canadian corporation, coming into the United States and trying to tell our law enforcement agency. The people who are protesting should be dealt with as if they were terrorists. At the same time that our middle class is collapsing. At the same time that the, the most important thing the House of Representatives could do yesterday is, is defy the Supreme Court's Roe v. Wade decision. Now, think what you want about abortion. The question you have to ask yourself isn't, you know, was that a, you know, a good bill or a bad bill? question you have to ask yourself is, knowing that that bill will not make it through the Senate and that the president has already said he would veto if it got to the White, it got to the White House, and knowing that that bill will have absolutely nothing to do with job creation or the, the strength of the middle class, why are, why are the Republicans doing that in the House of Representatives instead of passing legislation that takes away tax breaks for corporations that ship our jobs overseas? for example, or creating jobs here in the United States, or doing something about a looming you know, carbon crisis. Bill McKibben has a new piece in, in the Rolling Stone, by the way, talking about this stuff. It's really worth checking out. So these, I think, are, are really the important issues of our day. And the Republicans, I mean, I, I, we all know the answer. The answer goes back to January 20th, 2009, the night of the day that Barack Obama was inaugurated. I was here in Washington, D.C. I stood probably 60 yards away from Barack Obama as he was sworn in. I was the closest member of the press to the president as he was sworn in. It was really kind of cool. Ellen Ratner got us, a, you know, with the talk radio news service, got us a, 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 in the international press space right there on the same level as the president and I, if I could have just walked around the corner and shook his hand if the two burly secret service guys had let me <laughs> not that I was inclined to but and I was I was standing you know uh, 70 feet away or 100 feet away from George W Bush was sitting behind him and he was making these awful faces and doing these flipper gestures you know these sarcastic applause lines I was sure that that was going to be the big story the next day turned out it wasn't So, anyhow, we've got, this, uh, we've got this disaster, and it goes back to that day. Actually, the night of that day. The night of that day, after Obama was sworn in, in the caucus room restaurant here in Washington, D.C., 
there was a group of about 15 Republicans who got together and plot, plotted to bring down the Obama presidency. They, they, uh, they used the Taliban as their model, according to one of the people who, one of the Republicans who was there. He said this publicly later. And that what they, were, what they swore to do was block anything. Now keep in mind, on that day, we were losing 700,000 jobs a month. They blocked to do anything. They, sw- they swore an oath to each other to, to block anything that would improve the economy, help America, and thus make the Obama presidency look successful. And for a couple of weeks there, they were successful. And then Teddy Kennedy died. And I don't remember the exact sequence of events, but there was a few weeks, you know, the, the first few weeks of the Obama presidency, he did not have a filibuster-proof uh, Senate, so they were able to block him in the Senate, even when good legislation came out of the House. And then there was a little window of about, I, as I recall, eight, eight, eight weeks to 11 weeks, something like that, just a couple of months, where by one vote, they could actually get stuff done, and they got a lot done. And then Scott Brown got appointed, and boom, they lost their ability to filibuster or to block filibusters by the Republicans. And for the last five years, the Republicans have blocked every significant effort by this administration to to strengthen the American middle class, which on average owns thirty-eight thousand dollars worth of wealth, whereas the average Australian middle class family owns one hundred ninety-three thousand dollars worth of wealth. And the Republicans like it this way. Libertarianism. Yes, you know what libertarianism is called? I mean, we've tried it before. It's called feudalism. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 866-987-THOM. Kings and queens, lords and ladies, all that stuff. Yeah, that's libertarianism. We'll be back 27 minutes past the hour. Back with your calls and my thoughts. 